All right, here we are with our M21 blue set review. Again, we are doing commons, uncommons, then rares, and within each color, not alphabetically, but ordered by CMC. So that's gonna kick us off here with Opt, an oldie, but maybe a goodie in this set. This is such a set dependent card. Single blue instant, scry one, then draw a card. So we've seen this range from like, I forget what, what set it was that I was like, this is unplayable. Maybe it was- Ixalan? Like, Ixalan, there you go. Yeah. To it being such a strong role player in Dominaria. And I do think Blue Red, Blue Red, you know, we haven't gotten our hands on any of the cards yet. Blue Red is an early front runner for me for best archetype or-, or Me too. Potentially the least top archetype. And I think Opt is going to be a really strong role player. Not only does the like spells matter thing, but does the drawing multiple cards in a turn thing. I think it's going to check a lot of boxes. Yeah, I'm I'm excited about Opt in this set for sure. So I think I think overall or in general, people underrate Opt in Limited, right? I think Ixalan was the outlier where it was, it was you couldn't cast spells that did nothing, even if they cost one mana. But I think just this effect is is pretty decent, and like you said, contextually, like blue red, this card's gonna be very very good in blue red with like spell gorger weird it's just a bunch of power stuff mm -hmm. and in blue green too right just growing your lore scale quaddles or growing whatever your, your larger creatures there's a lot of cards that this interacts favorably with with just being a good card on a baseline just mm -hmm. you, you want this effect in a lot of your decks i have this as my third best blue common and maybe that speaks to what blue's commons are doing yeah, think, more than it's more of a, an indictment of blue mm -hmm. than it is a right Right, but I think you're going to want, like, two to three of this in most of your blue decks. I think this card's really, really good. Like, you can think of it think of it almost like there's enough payoffs for draw a card in the set that it's almost like cycling in mm -hmm. from Akoria, right? Where you cast this card, you get a trigger, and you're, it replaces itself, right? Yeah. You, grow, you grow a creature. You fill your grave for, like, your blue-red uh, gold card that makes makes a big token, mm -hmm. right? So I like this. Is pro I'm probably going to start this as a C plus. Honestly, I think this is important to the blue decks. I'm gonna I'm gonna hop on board. I think I haven't I haven't yeah. quite thought about uh, I haven't thought about my rankings of the blue commons yet. So I think uh, I think this is is going to be good. Yeah. Cool. Okay. okay. So next one up, we got rookie mistake. This is a single blue mana for an instant, and it says until end of turn, target creature gets plus O plus two, and another creature gets negative two negative O. Am I crazy to like this card? No, it's it's like uh, blue skullduggery in a way, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I like it. It's it's tricksy, and you know, in some sets, I'm um, trying to think like, uh, what well, the sea legs is kind of a similar card where mm -hmm. you know it messes with power and toughness, and that card was okay, but blue decks, eh, it was you know, I, was it work control decks blue or were blue decks control decks in that form or were they sea correct? legs was bad. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to think that was was blue mostly. Yeah, because blue was uh was um but was treasure and stuff, right? Blessing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But this set, I to for some context for blue, uh, blue is pretty aggressive. Blue wants to beat down a, a decent amount in this set. It's 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 not all that controlling. It's very mm -hmm. tempo based. So that means that it's going to be involved in combat more often, and it's it's power and toughness, and its stats are going to matter more often. So this card is going to matter more often. I don't right. think you're likely to get a two for one from this a lot no, of the time, but no. but it but it does have like you know fifteen percent of the time you get a two for one out of your one mana combat trick is kind of cool. Well, I mean, even just like imagine just lining up a creature, it doesn't like it doesn't have to be even that specific of stats, but just going like plus two toughness to this one, negative two to that one. I think this is gonna get you like just be a one mana combat trick that. Tr makes your trade favorable a good amount of the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So I, I not a, not not at all gonna give this a high grade. It's gonna be no, like a C minus, C minus D plus. Exactly. Yeah, but but it's it's gonna be better than some of the combat tricks in blue we've seen before. Here we got Wall of Runes, single blue for an O four <laughs> with Defender, and when it ETBs, Scry one. I I am not excited about this card. It's for your blue white flyers deck, the classic oh, blue white flyers archetypes. Yeah, it's for your nine lives deck. deck. Yeah, I, I think yeah. D, D minus sideboard. I don't know. I don't, I don't care what low grade we give this. So it could be. It could actually be a little bit better. Uh, again, I think it's gonna be better than it was in War because you could you just you just could not play a creature that didn't attack a planeswalker in War. Correct. Like that just felt so bad. So I think that this will do its job that it's looking to do much better. I just don't know how often you're gonna be looking for that job, right? So I, I think this is, I don't want to write it off as like F or anything, but like D, right? 
Yeah, I, I'm going D minus. Yeah, that's, yeah, I like that. That's fine. Pretty bad. All right, so next up here, we've got Frantic Inventories. This is sort of a reprint, functional reprint in a way. One and a blue for an instant. Draw a card. Then draw cards equal to the number of cards named Frantic Inventory in your graveyard. Eh. It's the catch all Yeah, I eh for me too. So we, right? we saw this effect last in, um, what's it called? Shadows? Yeah, it was take inventory, right? right. And it, was, it was a sorcery. And, and that didn't quite get there. Yeah, yeah it, was, it, it was a sorcery, so that's a little different. Um, I think... I just like... I don't like it. I want Thrill of Possibility <laughs> over this every time. Like if Thrill and Opt even. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think this card is all that good. So... I think there's there's some it has a certain pedigree this type of card because accumulated knowledge has been you know back in the day was a great card and constructed right and I think that that that, uh, that lore and that mythos has had worked its way up and then we saw a take inventory and people were like oh yeah yeah this is a good card it ended up not being that good I think we've kind of gotten to that point with this again where I think a lot of seasoned players look at this and see accumulated knowledge. Mm-hmm. And, and get excited for it, but I, I don't think it's that good. The, I, the problem I have with it, and people are talking in chat about, like, well, the first one's bad, but the second one's okay, and then the third one is good. <laughs> but the problem I have with that is that I don't, in this format that I think is going to be a curve-out format, but maybe I think every format's going to be a curve-out format because <laughs> I have, like, PTSD or something. But, yeah. I, I, I mean, just looking at White's, what White's trying to do, what I think Red's trying to do... Even I, I think there are good curves in in most of the colors that you know doing spending four mana with two cards over multiple turns to build your own divination is not what I'm about. I think so. It does do the whole thing where like yeah, it triggers your blue green stuff, triggers your red blue prowess stuff, and I I will say that. You know, sometimes uh, a regular or like an average card draw spell gets devalued because there's an abundance of card draw. Uh -huh. Looking at your blue, there's actually not a ton of just straight card draw, right? There's there's Reign of Revelation at Uncommon. But doesn't but that make... Oh, sorry. Oh, no, 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 no. Go ahead, go doesn't ahead. Doesn't that make this worse then because you're likely to like be fighting over them with the other blue drafter? Uh, I mean, in a sense, but th that that's an argument for it being an objectively desirable card. Sure. If you're fighting over it, right? Yeah, but it's but it's a, it's an objectively desirable card and that you want multiple. You want multiple yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, I'm just gonna give this like a C minus to start with because yeah. yeah, if you get three of them, you'll play them and they'll be they'll be good. But I'm not. not it's not like Squad. I don't think where I'm actively gonna be looking for it. Oh no, no! Don't besmirch the name of Squad. <laughs> yeah, I know. Look. Card. Don't have to convince me. Keen Glide Master is one and a blue for a two one, and you can pay two and a blue to give target creature flying until end of turn. Uh this Tricky. is this is this feels like filler to me, like D plus. Hmm. Yeah. I I read this card and it it's it seems to me like many cards you've had in the past that just have been too clunky. Mm-hmm. I don't think I like this card, but I, I can see myself coming up on it. I, I'm going to start it at like a D plus, but... I'm going to start D plus as well. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe this is going to be better than it looks, but I, I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah, I just think like, I think it's just mostly going to be a two mana, a goblin piker, like 95% of the time. And then yeah. the other five, yeah, you're going to like throw a colossal dreadmaw into the air or something. But like three mana activation isn't happening until turn six or something. Yeah, it's it's a it's a late game way to take over the game and or win a race in a, in a tight spot. Yeah. And who knows if those things are going to be relevant? Yeah. Right? Maybe, maybe that means it's going to be better and like more obnoxious than I think. But I'm going to start D plus. Yeah. All right. Next up, we have we have lofty denial. So this is one in a blue for an instant. Counter target spell unless its controller pays one mana. If you control a creature with flying, counter that spell unless its controller pays four instead. So this is like a D, but it's like an A if you're playing against Ben. Against Ben, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, this I'm not a fan of this. Um, even so, if it always costs four on turn two, it would enable some sort of like decent control deck. But it never costs four on turn two. No, right. So, so on turn two, you're gonna get the. You're thing. gonna get the thing. Yeah, you're gonna get the. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. 
So, I mean, you know, it's it, it's it's just a card that it reads exciting, I think. It reads it's appealing. The the idea of it is appealing, but uh maybe you're going to play this card once in a while if you do have the, like the the nine creature flying deck or certain nine flying creature deck. But otherwise it's like a D, right? Yeah, I'm going to start D, I think. Yeah. And there's also just like a bunch of protection spells in the set anyways. Like there's there's feet of resistance and there's the Ranger's Guile. So if you're going to play this kind of card, it's like you just play those instead. Mm -hmm. So is this the best blue common? Or is this, is this the second best? You see it in your top three? So Alright, we got Valdalian Arcanist here. Yeah, go ahead. For a one three and tap to add a colorless mana, you spend that mana only to cast an instant or sorcery spell. So what what instant or sorceries are you planning to cast? Because I'm looking at blue, and they're all pretty cheap. Sure, There's... but that so then you get to double spell. You like cast a creature, and then also have now you have whatever. Yeah. I guess I, I think... guess you just yeah. Then that now like your scorching dragon fire costs one basically, or thrill costs one, or. But that means that you're not getting a meaningful discount that much that often because you're often going to be able to double spell with those cards anyways. Right, so then, then this is just a one three. After that, yeah, I don't love this here. Honestly, I don't think it's all that great. Like maybe there's a few hidden things I'm missing here. Like I'm I'm just looking at blue, right? Oh. I'm not so so like looking at red. There might be some things I'm missing. Looking at white, there might be some expensive things I'm missing. Turn casts like an expensive removal spell a little bit early. Like the there's a few five mana removal spells. So maybe it's a little bit better than I'm giving it credit for, but. No, you, you make a good point that there aren't expensive spells. Like, this was really good in Dominaria because of Kicker. Yeah. So that's fair. Maybe this... I'm going to go... I'm going to start this at a C-. minus. All right. I'm going to be a little more optimistic on a C, but I could definitely see this uh, not, not getting there. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. So, <clears throat> next up here, Classic. We've got Cancel. So this is one blue blue for Counter Target Spell. I <laughs> I didn't. I think no. I think this is like, <laughs> this is like a C minus D plus, like it like it always is. Or is this well? Is this better? So I mean, if you think about the past, you know, two three years or so, uh, cancel variants have been playable mm -hmm. for one reason or another, right? Um, either the the format just lines up in a way where there's you know, important things on four and five you want to counter, or the more common one is there is just an abundance of flash things to do or instant speed stuff to do. So. The, the biggest knock against the cancel that you have to hold it up and then if your opponent does nothing, you do not you do nothing. Mm -hmm. It has been diminished in a lot of sets because you just cast your raw spell or cast your flash creature or whatever. Right. There's not that much of that in this set. Right? There's just not that much to do if your opponent passes the turn and you have yeah. a cancel up. So I'm gonna start low on this one. I'm gonna start at like, you know, the D plus range. Mm -hmm. Um Good out of the sideboard. I think I think people don't play cancel out of the sideboard enough. Like cancel out of the sideboard is pretty potent. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I, I don't think this is quite the set for cancel. Be curious to hear your thoughts on this next card. Frost Breath, two and a blue for an instant. Tap up to two target creatures. Those creatures don't untap during their controller's next untap step. Yeah. So this is this is another oldie. Um, this used to be fine, right? It used to be not exciting, but it used to be like a fine tempo card and i think i think it's gonna be fine here too i i think it's going to do its job of you know buying you a turn in the race um in some in some matchups like blue white's gonna kind of want it otherwise it's i mean maybe actually no blue red actually maybe really wants this so here's the thing is that and i feel like we're again we're seeing now the benefit second benefit of looking at stuff in in cmc order blue is not aggressive alex uh, blue, has well, an, blue has an 04 and a 2 <laughs> 1 and a 1 3. So its curve doesn't start low. And I think it, it needs the other colors to support it there, right? Like the red, the red and the white really fill in that gap. Sure. But it does have a lot of like tempo y things as you move up the curve, right? That that mm -hmm. that's like so yeah, it's not like aggressive in the traditional sense, um, but it's it's a very good tempo y aggressive support color, and it has its own support like aggressive cards some some places right but like you said on its own if you're main blue yeah you're not gonna want this card yeah yeah i'm gonna start like the thing also about this card is i think like your deck probably if your deck wants it your deck probably only wants one yeah yeah for sure 
And I think and just I think, just to throw out there, if you're playing this as a defensive spell, that's it's a yikes. Yeah, like, big yikes. You really want to be taking advantage of removing two blockers for two turns. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I, I'm gonna start this as a D with the caveat that some decks are are really gonna want the first copy. Yeah, I'm gonna go D. Yeah, plus. I think I think this is yeah. Good. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I guess the the important part is just to not get people too excited about the card because it's it's not it's not a it's not a great card by any means. All right. Yeah. So next up, we have Library Larcenist. I'm really curious to hear your thoughts on this one. So this is two and a blue for a one-two. And it says, whenever Library Larcenist attacks, draw a card. Yeah, well, I mean, spoiler, I did listen to your podcast this week. So I I, I heard your roller coaster of emotions. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, my uh, I was sort of in the in the Alex camp a little bit. Or because I was like, oh, this is just the, um, the thief, the audacious thief or whatever from last corset, which was... Two and a black for a two-two with this effect, except you also lost a life. Yes. Um. So like, unlike, um, you know, scroll thieves or thieving otters, whatever. This you recoup your card on attacks. The the real nail in the coffin for me was when you were like, oh god, when you're on the draw with this card, it's so atrocious. Yeah. (laughs) Like a three mana one two that's not attacking until turn four to get you your card. And if you're on the draw, you don't have good attacks. So it's like three mana suspend one draw card. I I think this is bad. I think this is another one of those like sort of mini like like the Falconer sort of a mini game card where you're like, all right, gotta gotta push it through, gotta gotta frost breath this if that's what you're into. The fact that the fact that you can never just say I'm on the draw, I will trade this off with their two drop or like not never, but not often that hurts. Right. Um, like, yeah, man, that's just like not a great scenario. And of course I like to look cards in, you know, I like to be optimistic about cards. Right. So if you Mm -hmm. you do play this on three and you have some get something out of the way, that's good. There's also like an aura we're going to see in a minute that can, give this flying there's a few other things that give this flying so i think i think contextually actually this is going to play out a little bit better than just on base rate like what audacious thief or thieving otter was because i think there's a few decent ways to get this card in right so yeah it's bad on its own there's ways to get it in so maybe it's like kind of not a build around but more like my deck has enough ways to support this i think it'll be a good card uh yeah I'm, I'm gonna start this off as a d yeah that's fair that's fair i i'm gonna be optimistic i'm gonna start this as a c because i think it's gonna be good enough enough of the time and you're gonna find enough spots basically that, that that's my argument okay all right have we found it have we found the best blue common mistral singer oh i love this card yeah, yeah. <laughs> two in a blue two two flyer with prowess this card is chef's kiss so in to, to keep making cons of tarkir uh comparisons there was a uh, three mana two one flyer with prowess in that set that was quite good, and mm-hmm. I think this is going to be better. Yeah, we saw. I mean, we saw this exact card actually in M nineteen, right? And it was like home at home, and, uh, and yeah, there was blue red in that set, which was like spells ish, and it was blue white aggro artifacts beat down, mm-hmm. and it was a good card there. And yeah. I think it's going to be even a little bit better in this set, like if we're just with opt and thrill possibility. All those cool cards. So yeah, I I like this card. I like this at C plus. Yep. Could even see it being like B minus, just being like I just want all the Mistral Singers I can get. Yeah, I'm gonna go yeah. C plus as well. Yeah, I'm excited. For, I think this is probably going to be one of the better uh, one of the better places that we've seen this card. Basically. Mm-hmm. All right, and then we have Rousing Reed. So this is this is a real interesting one. So this <laughs> is two and a blue for an enchantment or aura. When Rousing Reed enters the battlefield, draw two cards, then discard a card. Enchanted creature gets plus one plus one and has flying. So it's Cartouche of Knowledge from Omnicat for people yeah. who played that, which was a great card. Mm-hmm. Um, and bl- like it was the best blue common in that set. And this is a mana more, and you get to have see an additional card basically. This card seems great, and it doesn't look like there's a lot of blowout potential for this. The like, like grasp of darkness, and that's about it. Dragonfire, I suppose. Capture Sphere. Dragonfire Shock. Well, Capture Sphere doesn't. Capture yeah, it doesn't. Because is... this loop, replaces right? itself. Yeah. Yeah, this replaces itself. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. You're. You're right. Yeah. That. That's fair. I think, um, I think this is good. Yeah. You know, like 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 I said, put it on the Larcenist, right? Well, yeah. Why don't you dream a little bigger? Why don't you put it on something <laughs> that actually deals damage? Yeah. 
Yeah, I think this is like a solid, solid C. I think or do you want to go C plus? Yeah, I think I want to go C. I can, I can almost see this being C plus, but yeah, I, I like C. Yeah. Teferi's protege, move over to Larian Scholar. Two and a blue for a two three human wizard <laughs> with one and a blue tap. Draw a card, then discard a card. This uh, is yeah. Plunky. Plunky. Uh, but I think is going to like it has like it has the the um draw two card synergy in a turn thing mm -hmm. and i think that uh that's gonna be good i think just a three minute two three is, is fine not not great and uh I, I do think like there's not mana sinks in this format right yeah there's not that many mana sinks mana sinks are they might be less important just because you know because the games don't dictate you need mana sinks or that's just not the important thing at the same time, yeah, this is like a decent place to put two man. This reminds me a lot of the White Tapper, right? Where it's just like, eh, fine. Like you'll play it, and sometimes it'll be fine. It's gonna. It has a, it has a higher floor than the White Tapper for sure. I'm just not excited about two mana to tap at all. Is the thing. But like, I, I, you're not. I again, in theory, you're not activating this until like turn five or six, and then like the difference between two mana and one mana isn't that big of a deal. I'm I'm gonna start C minus. I'm gonna start C minus as well. Okay, I thought you were gonna say like C plus for a no, second. No, it's but... not a C plus. Yeah, yeah. So I think no. like I think C feels optimistic. Yeah, like, I, I like C minus for this. You're it's like total filler plus but or I think filler that, minus. I think this format is interested in three mana two threes. Is that is that crazy? Think, Am I wrong about think... that? Like people are gonna be playing two twos. Two mana two twos a lot, I think. Yeah, I don't have a great I don't have a great feel on that just yet. So I'm not positive if if two mana two three is gonna be like an actively good thing. But if it is, I'm I'm certainly willing to bring this card a little bit higher than it was. Yeah, so, I'm gonna I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go up to C actually. I'll go up to yeah. C. All right, it's All right. back. Got capture sphere, so let's see let's see if this one can redeem itself the third time around. <laughs> It's three and a blue for a flash enchantment or an enchanted creature. Enchanted creature. When Capture Sphere enters the battlefield, tap enchanted creature. Enchanted creature does not untap during its controller's untap step. Uh, I mean, this is your removal spell in blue. You don't. You yeah. Don't get, you don't get your essence scatter this time. Yeah, it's it's kind of funny. Like usually, you know, r red has three removal spells. At common. And, yeah, at common. And blue has like this, <laughs> and then a few counter spells and a few like tempo we things. It doesn't, it doesn't even get a bounce spell actually. It's funny because you got you. Got, I mean, you on uh, you and neighbor more really high on blue. I think blue's commons are junky. So I uh, I think that blues. I think we were looking more at blues uncommons when we were getting excited, and now that the full set is out, it's like yeah, blues commons actually aren't that good. Yeah. Um. I at the time the the. Well, basically, all the blue commons that were good, uh, barring like the five drop we're going to see in a second, were out already. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I agree that blue is worse than uh, my initial impression. But so so where uh, where do you think Capture Sphere is going to lie in it's the format? It's going to be better than it was in yeah. Korea, but I yes, don't think, I think by much. I agree with that. And, and to be fair, it wasn't like it wasn't bad in Aquaria. Yeah. Like it was fine. I think this will be like C. I'm like to to, to yeah. jump ahead. I think I'm just gonna grade it a C. Like, it's a yeah, good yeah. It'll it will be fine. Not exciting. It's shutting down some tap abilities. Is good. There's not like like blue has a bounce spell. Uh, red and black have sacrificey stuff. Um, like white can turn this into a four. Your thing that's capture spirit into a four four flyer. Like there are ways to uh, mitigate this in, in basically every color. Mm -hmm. So. But it, but you know, it's it's still gonna one for one. Yeah, it's very much like the checking a box removal spell, right? You're just like, I need a copy of this. I need maybe two copies of this. It's nothing you're like excited about. Yeah, right. So <laughs> leave it, leave it there, and mm -hmm. uh, we'll we'll move on, and maybe maybe Capture Sphere will surprise us this this go around. We've got Tome Anima, which is three and a blue for a three three spirit. It can't be blocked as long as you've drawn two or more cards this turn. Yeah, so basically as long as you've drawn an additional card, if you opt, because you'd never care about it being not being able to block on your opponent's turn. Right. Um, this seems like a synergy piece to me. Yeah, it's tricky. Yeah, it is tricky. I I kind of like it. My gut likes it. Yeah, me too. 
but you know what I'm... maybe we're wrong on frantic inventory you think it's gonna be you think because because there's so many things that it just care seems about. like so many things like it seems like the glue kind of my problem with this card is that it just does not block well when it comes down right that, that's what you want your four drop aggressive creature to do to block well when it comes down and then turn around and, and start beating down so that's kind of a problem i think sure i'm gonna start this at the c minus i think think i i was optimistic looking at it at first and i i see, still I want so. to be yeah. optimistic but I'm, I'm i'm fine with c minus yeah i don't know i i can i can see this being like an important i no no i, was getting, I don't even think so i was gonna say i can see this being an important part but it's a four drop and it's not an exciting four drop so i i think it's just like gonna be filler someone in the chat just said yeah. you want to turtle up you you want to crab up here with wish yeah <laughs> so in a blue two five that's it's, it it's good this that's is it good. this is good right I want to. I want to start this as as good ish, right? Like not good, good, but good ish. Sure, yeah. Like you know, it was it was good in Ravnica contextually. I don't know if that same context is going to apply here, but I think it will because I think things aren't actually very large in this, this set. Blocks, yeah, this blocks everything. Think, it dodges yeah. grasp. Let's just remember, like five toughness is, I think, gonna be kind of key. Yeah, I, mean, I guess it doesn't dodge grasp in combat, <laughs> but like. You still get your block. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, I don't know. I think this is good. Yeah, I, th I think it'll be a C. Yeah. All right, next one up, we got Roaming Ghost Light. So this is three blue blue for a three two flyer. When Roaming Ghost Light enters the battlefield, return up to one non-spirit creature to its owner's hand. Oh, boy. Yeah, this is very good. Yeah, this is exciting. So I've also been kind of on a roller coaster with this card. When I first saw it, I... I it was one of the ones where I was like, did I read that wrong? I did not read that wrong. Okay, that is what the card says. And then I was like, but it's a 3-2. Like, it's pretty it's pretty fragile. I just dies to shock, which is a thing. Um, and there's not that many spirits, just for anybody wondering. Like, it's it can't bounce itself. Uh, and there's, like, a few floating around in blue and white. Mm -hmm. So that's not super relevant. I don't know. I... I think this is, I guess the comparison to make is like Chillbringer, right? That's that's probably probably an apt comparison from, mm -hmm. from uh, Ravnica Allegiance. It's, it's a little bit better than that, I think. Yeah. So I like this. It is B minus. So you have this as the best blue common? Yeah. But this, I, I'm starting this as best blue common. Um, and I, I can see it moving down, though. I can see it being hyped and people like being excited about it. Oh, sorry. This or Mistral Singer, I guess, is the call is the question. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, I'm gonna start Ghost Light, but I can see that swapping in a day after I play the set, right? Yeah. Oof, it's so tough because I think I think the three drop is gonna be better, but I don't know. It it has a lot of the same you know, like I was joking, do you want five Bastard's Acolytes? You don't want five of this, right? I don't, I don't think know. You I... wanted five Chillbringers. <sighs> you did. Yeah. Man, maybe. Did you, though? I can't yes, even remember. You, yes, you did. I will yeah, remind okay. you, you did. All right, all right. Thank you for, the, thank you for reminding me. I forgot. <laughs> it was like you would just play as many of those and as many Grasping Acolytes as you could. Okay, you know what? I'm, I'm going to take a stance. I'm going to say this is number one. I'm going to say this is Blue Common number one. Okay. I'm down, yeah, I'm and, down and, for B yeah. minus Best Blue Common. Okay. I, I like it. All right, read the tides. Five and a blue for a sorcery. Choose one, draw three cards, or return up to two target creatures to their owner's hands. All right, so here's your uh, your thing to ramp out with Voldalia and Arcanist, right? Oh, yeah, sick. <laughs> That's really good. I do actually like this card. Um, I, I recognize that it is slow, but the modal effect is actually quite nice. Um, yeah, it is. Like, we, I generally don't like the whatever six mana you know, bounce three things, top a creature, bounce a thing. Like, I don't like those cards because they're really only good uh, when you're aggressive. But the fact that you can, uh, you know, the fact that this is modal of, like, I can draw three cards if I want to, which six mana draw three is expensive, but Voltalian Arcanist, as you said. I just think there are decks that are going to want this, and the fact that it plays well in, like, all of the sort of, like, quadrants. I guess not, yeah. it's not great in your opener, but the other three quadrants, I think it's pretty good. Well, whenever you have a modal spell, it is two very different things, yeah. right? That's that's that is exciting, right? Because it, like you said, if you're if you're looking at it in the perspective of like quadrant theory, then yes, like it it does when you're at parity, you draws three cards when you're just about to turn the corner or you need something really badly, 
it, it bounces something, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, I like it. I, I think it's still just like a C minus or a D plus mm-hmm. because it's it's the six mana card, but yeah, it's uh it it's certainly it's certainly better than 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 other effects that are like this that we've seen. Yeah, for sure. Right. And I think I think maybe you know you'll you'll play one and be pretty okay with it. Yeah. All right. Now we got last blue common here, spine megalodon. Uh, <laughs> I thought we dodged this. I thought, <laughs> I thought we were, I thought we were is, done. Oh, okay, this is just from the Planeswalker deck, Ethan. Don't worry. We're okay, not actually going to stay as a fact. Good, good. So this is five blue, blue for a five, seven hexproof. Whenever Spine Megalodon attacks, you scry one. I actually don't think this card is going to be all that good. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I agree. But I don't know. There, There is a part. There is there are going to be times when this feels kind of like Honey Mammoth felt. Like, <sighs> yeah. Or you're, you just... you're like, all right, I, I'm getting them. And no matter, just like, just don't have the hexproof creature and I'll be good. But yeah. seven, seven mana is a lot more than six. And, and the Honey Man's coming down a turn earlier and gaining four life was like the yes. real thing that, that gave you that feeling. Mm-hmm. I th- This is like a common thing that you can ramp to and it's okay. And I, we also just kind of have the, what's it? The um, Arcane Flight plus Turtle combo, right? We have the yeah. Rousing Reed plus this. So maybe this is just like a so control. So a control deck. Yeah, but... Right. I mean, I think it's kind of white where it can be both, right? Like where it's like half the half the things are very aggressive and half them are yeah, can be really yeah. controlling. It does feel split in that way? That's fair. I I don't know. I think this is like a role player. It plays a role. It does a thing if you want that role to be filled. That's the best way I can describe this card. I'm, but no, the more I, the more I see blue, I, I am actually I, I am thinking that blue green might actually be good. On on just like. Ramping into, Ramp into fatties, I think, is gonna be a thing you can do. I think, and there and are like, the tools at common to like support that as a as a plan that doesn't get disrupted that much. Yeah, and there's also just like a strange amount of large blue monsters in this set. Like, there's this one, there's one in uncommon. Mm-hmm. There's yeah. So, so what do you want to get this? This is like a, a C still, right? It's probably still a C minus. Like, so yeah, I, yeah. You're you're it, not you're not playing this in most of your play... blue deck. You can play two at most. Yes, two. <laughs> yeah, and, <laughs> and that's that's at like that's asking a lot. Like, yeah, you can play two at most, and and that's basically if you're blue green, I think. Yeah, I I, 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 I can also just see a world where this card is like close to unplayable, honestly. So I, I don't know. How, it's hard for a seven for a, a five seven hex proof to be unplayable. I think it's seven way. mana though. Anyways, let's uh All right. take well, a look. So what, at are you, these what are you doing? D plus. Yeah, I, I'm gonna go D plus on this one first. Oh, not a believer, huh? I'm not a believer. Not right now, anyways. All right, all right. First one, we got miscast here for a single blue mana, an instant, and uncommon. And it says counter target instant or sorcery spell unless its controller pays three. Um, no, I would say no. no. I guess yeah, sideboard, but probably just F. But you still probably like uh, you know you're gonna bring it in specifically if your opponent has like a very I don't know, I can't even think of a card off the top of my head that you really want to counter with. Like like an expensive planeswalker. Volcanic not geyser. Even... Volca- sure, volcanic geyser. I don't even think you'd bring it in for that, though, yeah. right? Like, yeah, this is like sideboard D, as in you'll find a very niche place to play it sometimes. Actually, there's like a very specific rare. There's uh, in a Sublime Epiphany, which is like a five mana blue instant that I think you might want to bring it in for. But other than that, no. Nah. Yeah. I like this card quite a bit. More more, yeah, more KTK Elder. love. Jeskai Elder, one <laughs> blue for a 1-2 with prowess. When it deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. If you do, discard a card. Yeah. The implied 2-3. Yeah. Do you not like this card? I think I think it's it's a little bit worse than it was in cons, just because that was a format of 3-meta 2-2s, two and that card, this card was great in cons. I think it's going to be play out slightly worse, but still very good in this set. Like, That's I, fair. I'm and, gonna and, and this is, uh, you want to think about this in the context of probably blue-red and blue-white more than blue-green, blue-black. Though, I don't for know. Sure, for sure. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I think, I think in blue... There's also, I like, threat of that, like, you know, you, you play it, you play a 2-2 two, two on 2, and yeah. I attack into it with this. Yeah, yeah, the impl- you can what never you block gonna, it. You can't right? block yeah. it. yeah. Just, I think I think considering I think you want to put this in a deck where you're going to plan you're planning to play most of the game in turns one to six of the game right because it's just like not going to get through mm-hmm. very often later. But it's a good card. It, it, I don't want to downplay this too much, right? This is your it's a it's a 
close to premium card. So I'm going to give this like a C plus. C plus as well. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. I'm glad we can come to an agreement on that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And this one, I'm sure we're going to agree on this one. So this is riddle form. This is one in a blue for an enchantment. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you may have riddle form become a three, three Sphinx creature with flying addition to its other types until end of turn. And it has two in a blue. Scry one. Yeah. Ding, 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 ding. Winner, B winner. B plus. I mean, I like build around B plus, I think is fair. To yeah. Get. And I like, I would give it the caveat that it's, it's like, um, you know, you don't need to put that many non-creatures in your deck for this to be a good card, right? Like if this triggers twice and get them for hit three twice, and then you can have it around as scrying for later, it's a good card. So even with like eight or nine non-creatures, this is a fine card. Right, and the scry helps you get to your non-creatures, and just on its baseline or alone, just like this coming down on two. If if you haven't played against this card, this coming down on two is such a threat, right? It it's such a potent threat, and maybe the format lines up in a way where it's not going to be as good as it was in our devastation, but it was like underrated for the entire format. There, I'm starting high on this one. I'm going to start B. I don't want to go too, too high. I'm but... going to build around B+. Plus. Ooh. Yeah. Get it. I have, to, I have to imagine on pack one, pick one, this out of most packs. Like, Cards are very good. Yeah. All right. All right. I'll, I'll stick with the B. I'll stick with the B, even though I do love this card. Okay. Next up is Unsubstantiate. This is your bounce spell. <laughs> one on a blue for an instant. Return target spell or creature to its owner's hand. Yeah, it's fine. It's, it's, a, it's an unsummon with a little bit of upside, just being two mana um don't play it it's like you know you you're, you want this less in your blue controlling decks but you'll still play it if you have enough card draw and it's an instant so it plays well like cancels and take inventory if we do think we're playing that on, mm -hmm. uh, on a regular basis this is like a solid c yeah so right I yeah nothing nothing too exciting but certainly certainly interesting yeah all right next up we have teferi's tutelage so this is two and a blue for an enchantment it says when teferi's tutelage enters the battlefield you draw a card then discard a card Whenever you draw a card, target opponent mills two cards. So this is what's it called? Psychic corrosion. Yeah, psychic corrosion with you. You get the ball rolling a little bit earlier. I think this is a real incentive to be a, a blue control deck. Blue control, yeah, I think so as well. Um, M nineteen was fairly beat down, right? Mm -hmm. And it was there, there was there was certainly a an, uh, there was it was it was a hostile format for psychic corrosion. Yes, right? I agree. And I don't know if it's going to be the same with this one. If we're assuming it's kind of, you know, we've said it's kind of a beatdown-ish format, shaping up to be one anyways. But yeah, like the loot on this is actually really the more big. I, the right? more I think about blue, I, I guess I think they're going to be basically like blue, red, and blue, white feel like they'll be beat down or want to be beat down. But I could even see blue, red being a control deck. Mm -hmm. I, I think blue is leaning much more controlling to me, which makes me kind of sad because I think... I mean, Roman Ghostlight, I guess, will still be good, but that does make Mistral Singer probably worse. Um, I think we're going to see, like, a, a clear split of, of like, aggressive blue decks and, and controlling blue decks. So, if we're assuming there are controlling blue decks, I do agree with you. The more we've seen blue, I feel like it's like, all right, I think blue does, does line itself to being controlling a lot of places. You know what I'm putting in my Teferi's Tutelage deck? Oh, God. Nine what? lives, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Nine lives. That is... You broke it. I broke it. I did it. You broke it. I'm gonna oh, give this. Oh, this, this is also kind of like we have tormenting voice. You off. There's just like a. You know what? This is gonna be better than corrosion because corrosion, like the support. This for also corrosion, triggers itself. This happens. Yeah, it triggers itself. Yeah. The support for corrosion was just like expensive card draw. Here we have a lot of like hand tripping stuff. So I think this is actually gonna be a lot better now that I think about I think it. Think this is like and, a build around B. I'm gonna go build around B minus. Yeah, I I think this card is gonna be decent for sure. And then, you know. Well, the card that pairs nicely with uh, Teferi's Doodleage is yeah, exactly. Revelation. Three and a blue for an instant. Draw three, then discard one. Yeah, classic Sift at instant speed. Yeah. Um, yeah, not not too much to say about it. It's just always, like, especially in, like, a core set, this kind of effect, straight, efficient card draw is, is certainly a bit better. Mm -hmm. So, C+. Plus? Yeah, I think C plus. All right, awesome. I could I could even see this being B minus territory. Yeah, I can I can see actually. That too. I'm gonna start B minus. All right, yeah, that's I'm fair. Start B minus. Um, All right, and you know what pairs real nice with uh, <laughs> Reign of Revelation. <laughs> yeah. Rewind. So rewind. Two blue, blue instant counter target spell. 
untap up to four target lands. This this card is overrated, I think. 100% oh, overrated. I mean, 100%. It, it's overrated for limited, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Forget wilderness reclamation yeah. nonsense. But uh, this, worse or better than cancel, I guess, is the, the real question. I think worse, correct? Worse. Mostly worse. Mostly worse unless you start to get to the nine instance range, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah. starting to what? D plus? D, D plus. Yeah, yeah, D, D plus. Sure, yeah. Yeah. All right. We got another Sanctum here. What's this one do? Yeah. So this one is Sanctum of Calm Waters. So this is three and a blue for legendary enchantment. At the beginning of your pre combat main phase, you may draw X cards where X is the number of shrines you control. If you do, discard a card. So I read this wrong initially. I thought it was discard the same amount of cards so you're just like filtering through your deck but once you get to a second shrine on this line you're drawing a card a turn with some looting right uh, i'm i'm not i'm not into this i think the shrine the shrines uh, other than the black one feel like traps to me yeah so i mean i think basically i i'm at the point with the shrines where except for the black one i'm looking for how good are the combinations of the shrines like i don't think you know, the white one on its own, like we saw, is not good. The blue one on its own is not good. But how good is the red one plus the blue one, for example? How good is the blue one plus the black one? Or, or like, combinations like that. And I think this is second to the blue one for when you pair it with something. Oh, sorry, the black one for when you pair it with something. Because if you can get four mana... Oh, yeah, this does pair with the, with Psychic Corrosion quite nicely. It, yeah, oh, that's true, it does. Sorry, to finish really, tutelage. If you can get this to drawing a card and looting each turn... That's that's a pretty powerful engine, right? It's so much do nothing though, Alex. Man, I know, but if we're our blue decks are looking to do nothing, if we're looking to play nine lives, well, I'm definitely looking to play nine lives. I'm so what do, start what do you like? This off at a D. I want to put it there as well because in a vacuum, yeah, it's a D, and you're not I'm you're not going to play it unless like just four mana loot each turn is not worth it, right? No, I, I don't want that. But I want to start at like a D plus just because I think if you pair this with another decent shrine. The, the, the thing about yeah, the thing about the shrines, probably not the white one, but this one. If I've got the black one and I'm in blue black, I'm probably gonna want this. Yes, I think so. And that's, and especially because you might have ways to pitch it, it's when a lot it's of not ifs. good. That's a lot of it's yeah, already. It's a lot so of it. It's a lot of it's for sure. I, I think I'm in for yeah, I, I, that's true. Like the, the rummage effects do make this better, or looting effects make this better, because when you can cast it in it'd be good, you can play it, and when not, you can pitch it. So I like like situational cards get better in that respect, but I, th I think starting off as a D is good. Yeah. All right. So Tide have... Skimmer is next. Yeah. So it's three and a blue for a two three flyer. Whenever you attack with two or more creatures with flying, draw a card. That's eh. fine. Yeah, it's fine. So <laughs> how, hold, hold how, on, how hold on, Mr. Has... Eh. You liked the four mana two three in white. Yes. That it sounds like better than this. The four mana two like, three that wait. made a one one flyer when oh. you attacked with it. Uh this is yes. better. this is better than that. No, because this requires two things. Like this and something else. Wait, but you said but the other thing requires two things. Because you're never attacking <laughs> with it if you don't have a second thing. Alright, alright, you got me. <laughs> you got me. My goodness. Yeah, this is fine. This is like this I is think like this a is C plus. A, yeah, it's C C plus. I think I think I or, or maybe not. maybe a build maybe it's a build around because I think this incentivizes you to go into a flyers deck. Yeah, sure, sure. I, I agree with that. So, okay, yeah, I, I'm, so, gonna, I'm see, gonna go C plus. It's it's a nice curve if we uh, if we take the the gold uncommon right, and uh, yeah. yeah like because the gold uncommon reduces the cost of flyers so make yeah. putting this on turn three is pretty nice. So yeah, all right, all right. I'm I'm with you on this one. All you right. you convinced me. Whoa, this is gonna be I'm excited to talk about this. Yeah, one. this is a good one. This is a real exciting one. So this we're, is we're, we're on the hold. same page, I think. Yeah, this is an enthralling hold. This is three blue blue for an enchantment aura at uncommon, and it says you can't choose an untapped creature as this spell's target as you cast it. And you control enchanted creature. It's mind control. Mind control is back, Ethan. Mind control is back and has been significantly <laughs> nerfed in my opinion. Yeah, significantly nerfed, yeah. Uh yeah, so I think it's that's good for limited because mind control is too powerful at yes. uncommon, um, especially in core sets. This uh, this is weird, and I think is going to be overrated. It's still good, yeah. Don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. but I think I think kind of a the the way I think people are going to look at this card the way they looked at um, what's it called the three red red two things fight instant speed. 
Yeah, that's a good comparison, Clash of the Titans. Because I think this is often going to take, like, their second best thing, or, like, it's going to take a thing, but then you have to wait a turn before that's good. Like, there, this makes the Tapper in white better. Like, in blue-white skies, you get the Tapper better. It makes Frostvale Ambush better. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I still think... I don't quite know... I'm going to think I start off at B- minus with this card. Um, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I, think, I, don't, I think it's still a pull into blue, but this is not this is not your grandfather's control magic, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I mean, so just to just to go over the points of why it's not right, because yes, I yes. think untapped creature is it, it reads like uh, not as big of a downside as it is. Just think about when you're if you're being aggressive or if you're the one that's being proactive or trying to be the beatdown, can't get something out of the way. Nope. Right. If you are getting beaten down. You're not going to get the biggest creature, likely, unless the opponent just didn't play anything mm-hmm. that turn, right? So you you steal their their second smallest creature, or sorry, their second best creature, and it's tapped for their attack, right? You take away an attacker, and that's still great, but you can't block with it, which might not be unintuitive. Um, so it's got it's got enough knocks against it. I think the best way, that, like the way that I'm thinking about this, is like pacifism in a choreo, where you you know. You, as long as you don't expect too much from it, yes. it's going to do its thing, yes. right? Just don't expect it to be like, like you said, your grandfather's and don't And magic. I think don't be stubborn about like, all right, I'm going to wait until they attack with Dreadmaw and then I'll steal yeah. that next turn. Just like, just steal their 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, just, yeah, exactly. Just, just, just steal the thing. thing and then you'll get on tap with it in a turn because the longer you wait, the less, like, this This is very, this is te- a little tempo negative in a sense, like, because you have to wait for them to have attacked you with it. And then it doesn't untap for you. This is also a card that, you know, especially once your opponent has seen it game one, a good player will start to play around it in a way that makes it awkward for you, mm-hmm. right? It's it's almost like a wrath in a way where it's just like you're, the the opponent sniffs it out and, you know, you you expect them to attack with their Colossal Dreadma and then you're like, oh. Or, well. yeah, it's like, think about like Divine Arrow where it's like you get yeah. to, de- you, you eventually get to decide if you think they have it, what they get to kill with it. Yes, yeah, that's that. That is a good way of putting. It. And and to be fair, that's worth something, right? Yes. That is worth like the fact that opponent has to play around it is worth something, right? Yeah. So yeah. B minus, B minus on this. B minus for me to to start with. Is wrong. Yeah. I think it's a really really interesting card. Yeah, it's super super interesting. It's gonna be interesting where to see where it falls. So I mean, yeah, we've got three blue uncommons left. I, I guess Riddle Form is is above this, and I think this is probably second. Hold? Yeah, against hold. Yes. Yeah, just just wanted to make that comparison. Yes. All right. So next up, we have Shipwreck Dowser. So this is three blue blue for a three three Merfolk with prowess. And when Shipwreck Dowser enters the battlefield, return target instant sorcery from your graveyard to your hand. Yeah, I like this. This is we've seen this before as a five mana two two, and we've been happy. Like yeah, for five mana three three with prowess. Oh, was it actually? I thought it was a three three. I thought it no, was just game power. Wow, yeah, you're right. Okay, I like it even more now. Okay, so what do C plus B minus? That's probably C plus because it's a, it's a five mana card, but it's really good. I kind of want to go B minus. This feels like a pull into blue to me. Yeah, I just feel like it's a pull into blue. Okay, yeah, B minus. It's a pull into blue. I like it. Talarian. Like, what? I was gonna say. I feel like we haven't been giving that many Bs. You know, I feel like everything's been in the, in the senior. Everything's because very very blue flat. Is, is not good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Talarian Kraken is four blue blue for a four six. Whenever you draw a card, you may pay one. When you do, you may tap or untap target creature. It's the biggest snare tactician you'll ever see. So it reminds me of uh, what was that? Okay, so there was a four mana four or six mana four six. Uh, in Sentinel white. of the Sentinel yes. of the Eternal Watch. It reminds me of that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, because it gives, gives you that vibe. At, by turn seven or whatever, by the time this is in play, yeah. paying one on your turn to tap down their biggest blocker is pretty yeah. irrelevant. Like that, yep. like one mana is not re- a relevant cost. So it's it feels very similar to that. And that card, yes, it had vigilance. But that card was really powerful. That card was strong. That card, and, and that card was strong. You know, we're giving the cap. We're talking about all these these uh, these expensive cards, and we're giving the caveat of well, it might be a really beat down format. That card was strong, Sentinel of the Eternal Watch, in a format, an Origins, which was like one of the most beatdown formats we've had, right? Mm-hmm. So this card is very similar, and yeah, like plays well with your offs, plays well with your frantic inventories or whatever the whatever they're called, the the, the blue draw card. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I I like this card. I think it's like 
a C plus just because it's a six drop. C, can't, C plus, yeah. Can't get too high of a grade to it, but it's good. Mm -hmm. All right, next up here, we got Waker of the Wave. So this is five blue blue rounding out our giant sea creatures uh, roster. We've got creatures your opponents control get negative one, negative O. Uh, and it has a two mana ability. Discard Waker of the Waves. So this is clearly from your hand. Look at the top two cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand, the other to your graveyard, and it's a seven-seven. You really, can't, they, it really couldn't have said like draw one of those cards. <laughs> like, yeah, put one into your hand. I know that'd be. This sweet. card is great. Yeah, this card's quite good. I mean, it's just a giant. It's like, it's like a, a sandworm in a way, right? It has cycling. It's a big seven-seven, and it has oh, that's a, such a, a great comparison. Yeah, it has a decent. Uh, it, it has a decent ability when it's on the battlefield. I like it a lot, I, and. You know, and, there, and there's reanimation stuff in in black. There's reanimation stuff. There's buying stuff back. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, this is like another solid C plus. I think C plus. I agree. Yeah, I like it. All right, what's our first rare here? It's a uh, ghostly pilferer. Yeah, so ghostly pilferer. We have one in a blue for two one spirit rogue. Whenever ghostly pilferer becomes untapped, you may pay two. If you do, draw a card. Whenever an opponent casts a spell from anywhere other than their hand, draw a card. Well, this card a card. Ghostly Pilfer can't be blocked this turn. So I believe that that middle line of text is not relevant. I mean, I can't think of anything. Maybe there's like one or two things. No, this I, I don't relevant think... uh, when Companion wasn't. Yeah, when Companions. Yeah. Yeah. Poor, um, poor Draneth, whatever. Uh, anyway, but yeah, so these first and third lines of text. Yeah, so so it's it's key to the city, right? If you remember that card, right? That's uh, from, from Kaladesh, mm -hmm. right? But on a creature. And this is like a fine, fine value card, right? We've seen a lot of these cards before. It's like tricksy, cheap blue creatures that can get in and loot. Uh, like perfectly solid C plus, right? Yes, I think. That's yeah, good. maybe, maybe even B minus ish range, but I, I think I'm gonna start this at uh, at C plus. And yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess it does trigger your your draw card stuff like consistently each each mm -hmm. turn. Yeah. Right. So that's uh, that's something to think about. For, for, but... for f not for free, right? You have to pay two. No, yeah, not not for free, but it's 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 a repeatable way. It's, a, it's an engine you can start building towards, which I think is is certainly something that is valuable. Yeah. But yeah, I think C plus. All right, All right, see the truth is up next. One in a blue for a sorcery. Look at the top three cards of your library. Put one into your hand, and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. If the spell was cast from anywhere other than your hand, put each of those cards into your hand instead. But that does not happen in this format. So yeah, this not is a single just time. Anticipate at sorcery speed. It doesn't draw a card. <laughs> no. <laughs> so like this is a. You're never taking this. This is a D minus D. Yeah. This is this is. No. No. Thank you. No, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> there are so many cards that do this a similar thing to this. So yeah, we're, we're not playing this one. Yeah. All right, next up we have Shacklegeist. So this is one and a blue for a 2-2 flyer. Shacklegeist can only be blocked... Sorry, Shacklegeist can only block creatures with flying. Tap two untapped spirits you control. Tap target creature you don't control. So not that many spirits. I think there's um, there's like, I don't know, six or five or something in the set, uh, if that. So that ability is not super relevant. So this is basically just two mana, two, two flyer. Can only block creatures with flying. And that's like a C? It's like a C, yeah. Like uh, what's it called? Um, Vaporkin or... Vapor, yeah, yeah. yeah. Welkin Turn Welk or whatever turn. you want. Those are two mana yeah. two ones, but yeah. Those whatever are, you want to call it. Solid C. <laughs> yeah, solid C, I like it. Okay. All right, so next up we have Baron Talarian Archmage. So this is one blue blue for a 2-2. Two, two. When, when Baron Talarian Archmage enters the battlefield, return up to one other target creature or planeswalker to its owner's hand. At the beginning of your end step, if a permanent was put into your hand from the battlefield this turn, you draw a card. Yeah. If a permanent was put into your hand from the battlefield this turn, draw a card. When is that happening? So if you bounce, if you, if you bounce your if own you bounce creature. it with that un, with the yeah. uncommon. Yeah, yeah, that, that's so. Or or this, right? You can you can just bounce your own creature, get a good ETB. Oh, so you can just pay three to draw a card at your end step. Yeah, like pay three, pick no, up one some. other. Oh yeah, pick up pick up like a, I don't know, a elvish a visionary, yeah. whatever it's called, right? The land war visionary. And this is just mana war, right? This is just like sure. straight. So it's like yeah. a C plus. C plus, yes. I think it's I think it's super solid. Mana war oh. had to be nerfed to a rare. <laughs> cool. All right, here it is. Teferi, Master of Time, two blue blue for a three loyalty walker. You may activate loyalty abilities of Teferi, Master of Time on any player's turn. Anytime you could cast an instant. So that means 
But you can do it on your turn and your opponent's turn. So you can do it yeah. twice in a turn cycle. So plus one draw a card, then discard a card. Minus three target creature you don't control phases out. I can't believe they brought back phasing. Treat it and anything attached to it as though they don't exist until it's controller's next turn. And then minus 10, take two extra turns after this one. Yeah, so uh, the the second level of non-intuitive play with this card is that its loyalty also takes up twice as fast, right? It goes like right. four and five and six and seven really quickly, right? So it has a lot of loyalty. Um, right. It's a looting machine, obviously. It triggers your draw a card kind of things. I, then, I would imagine the most likely scenario in limited is plus on your turn, minus on your opponent's turn. I think if you yeah. have a stable board, though, if, plus yeah, plus exactly. plus plus is huge. It's 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 almost like um, Bastard in a way, where it it does need protection if you want to keep it around for a little while. It doesn't just like, but it does. Pro- but the minus three does protect itself a little bit. A little bit, but like it's temporary and it takes a lot of loyalty, right? Sure. So this is a good card. It's a nice engine. Um, I don't think it's like great though, right? It's not like it's not like it's not Busto Planeswalker level. I think it's also just like a, a B B plus level. B, I'm gonna give it a B plus. I'm you're B taking plus. this over Riddle form. Yes, yes, you're taking so it over. It's, Riddle. A, it's, so it's, a, a, B it's a B plus. Yeah, B plus. But is I agree, totally... it's not in the A range. Yeah, it's 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 good and it's gonna be annoying, but it's uh, it's not it's not a bomb Planeswalker. All right, next up here we have Wait, carries hold, and oh on. sorry. Your opponent has to attack with at least three things to even have a chance to deal damage to this the first time. How does that? How do you figure? I guess if oh, because you phase whatever the one thing out, and if you have a creature, I mean, this is assuming you have blockers, right? Sure, right. So assuming you have blockers. Assuming you have blockers, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, if you have blocker, then to fairy, then you neg three. But neg three, yeah. And then maybe maybe we're underestimating how much how quickly you can neg three multiple times. I, I guess that's. That's probably part of the equation too. So maybe it plays out a little bit better than than I thought, but mm-hmm. I think I still like the B plus there. Right, because you can get right because you could go you go plus minus and then plus like maybe hopefully plus plus minus whatever. Um, all right, Teferi's Ageless Insight here is two blue blue for a legendary enchantment. If you would draw a card, except for the first one you draw on each of your draw steps, draw two cards instead. All right, so you're putting this in your nine lives deck to have many enchantments that don't do anything. <laughs> Yeah, but my nine lives keeps me alive, baby. Yeah. <laughs> and this, this is bad. Like, this is... Uh, this feels about as bad as the shrine. <laughs> so there's opt, there's thrill possibility. There, Like, you know, like I said, there, there is ways, a lot of but like, incidental, like, draw a card on, on a bunch of things. I don't think it's good by any means, but I don't think it's unplayable. I think this is like a... Yeah, I think this is pretty close to unplayable. I think this is a D minus. Yeah, I'm fair. That's fair. I'm, I'm not. I'm not gonna argue with this card with you on this one. Okay, what's this next one? Yeah, so we have Stormwing Entity. This is a sweet one. So this is three blue blue for a three three. It says this spell costs two and a blue less to cast if you cost cast an instant or sorcery this turn. So it only costs two mana. It has flying and has prowess, and it says when Stormwing Entity enters the battlefield, you scry two. Dang. Spicy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a nice, uh, nice little value package. B. Yeah, I think just like a solid B. Uh, like comboing this with basically anything is right. is good, right? Like the thing is, like you don't have to go opt into this on turn three to make it good, right? Well, t- like turn, it, turn four. Sorry, turn four. Yeah. yeah turn, uh, oh no, no, no. Oh, two in a blue left. Turn three. Turn three. Turn three. Yeah, yeah. Turn yeah. Yeah, on turn three. Like you can do that, and it's gonna be yeah. good. But even just going like you know a removal spell on four. And play this is very, very good as well. It's a huge tempo swing. Yeah, that's right? true. So yeah, I, I like B on this one. Mm-hmm. It's it's very solid. Discontinuity is next. Three triple blue for an instant. As long as it's your turn, the spell costs two blue blue less to cast. And it just says end the turn. So if you never had, if you never like played with this effect before, basically just like everything stops. Yeah. You exile <laughs> spells and abilities from the stack. Uh, players whose turn it is, you like go to end step, you discard to hand size, damage wears off. And quote this turn and quote until end of turn effects end. So the way this plays out on forgetting about the the as long as it's your turn text. The way this plays out is like a six mana time walk on on your but, opponent's upkeep. Yes, but your opponent gets an untap, which matters a lot, yes. right? Because they don't think their blockers untap, mm-hmm. their mana untaps. So I mean, six mana time walk on its own is not great, no. right? The untap matters. And so it's like ends up playing out like this weird 
sort of time walk, sort of counter spell split card. Um, because if you want to cast on your turn, you're likely going to be doing it when your opponent casts an instant speed removal spell, or a, a combat is about to go unfavorably for you, right? right. Yeah, six mana shatter pause, six mana <laughs> shatter, shatter yeah, literal shatter pause. Um, so yeah, this like, seems a little too yike, like a little too situational to me. It's niche in its applications. It does some cool stuff though, so it's it's not like, it's like keep, the floor it's keep safe. <laughs> yeah, it's keep safe, sure. <laughs> its floor isn't super low but it's also like the ceiling's not super high i you're not gonna take this card highly at all it's like a it's like a a d plus c minus d plus yeah like just the the mana cost i think is also too prohibitive all right we 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 reached yeah we've reached this one this one this one's the one i've been calling the dream trawler of this set so (laughs) this is sublime epiphany so this is four blue blue instant choose one or more counter target spell counter target act triggered Sorry, counter target activated or triggered ability. Return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. Create a token that's a copy of target creature you control. Target player draws a card. Yeah, this this card does everything. This does everything. This is a big groan. This okay, so you you know like it, even if your opponent doesn't cast anything into this, mm-hmm. right? What's happening on turn six is you're bouncing their biggest thing. You're getting a copy of your best thing, and you're drawing a card. That is a huge tempo swing. And that's that's like the worst case scenario. The worst case scenario is you can't cast it, obviously. But if you are at six mana, that's the worst case scenario. Yeah. They cast a spell into this. You counter their spell. The game's over. All that. The game is over, game's over. Alex. Game is over. Yes. No. No. No more words need to be said. Yeah. Right. Not to mention, you can just cast this on your turn to get a thing out of the way, draw a card, make it make it. Uh, Creature that might have I like think an the only the problem effect. for me is that there are no sagas, so you don't <laughs> you don't get the they go to blink their saga on chapter three, <laughs> and then you get the the full five. Yes, counter yeah. the, the ability, counter the spell. All right, but yeah, this is a just an A plus. You can you can counter a prowess trigger with this. <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah, this guy. Yeah, this is an this is an A A plus level card. Yeah, this, this is, is just probably one. the best rare in the set. This. Uh, best non-mythic, I'd say. Non-mythic, yeah. right? Best rare. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This card just busted. All right, last Pretty one here. Good. We've got Pursued Whale. This is five blue blue for an eight eight. When it ETBs, each opponent creates a one one red pirate creature token with this creature can't block and creatures you control attack each combat of able. Spells your opponents cast the target Pursued Whale cost three more to cast. Yeah. So the idea here is your opponent has to attack into your large creature with all their creatures. Uh, the little one one's gonna get through, likely because you want to. Captain get... Ahab is just a one one. <laughs> uh, I mean, have you read the book? Yeah, no. I haven't. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, this is this is good. This is very strong. Yeah, and the the, the three mana ability is, or sorry, the, the the last ability there is nice because that, basically the stuff that could kill this costs five. Basically. Yeah, exactly, exactly. There's the white one. There's the black five mana removal spell. So that that matters a lot, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think this card is, you know, as bad, close to as good as you can get for a five mana card. Does a lot of stuff. Has Se- protection. Seven oh, sorry, card. seven mana card. Seven mana card. Has protection. Mm-hmm. Uh, is big. Does a thing that you would like it to do. I think this is still like a B minus though. B minus B. Yeah, I'm going to go B, I think. Yeah. But yeah, B minus seems reasonable to me. Yeah. All right. That's blue. Yeah, that's blue.